Ecologists use diagrams to represent the way that matter and energy flows through an ecosystem and also to talk about the relationships between the biotic factors or the living things in an, in an environment. And here, for example, you see one of the three things that they use for that. There's food chains, which is this, food webs and food pyramids. We'll talk about each one of them in this video. Now, food chains basically is the direction in which um, shows you who eats who. And the arrows in the food chain usually point from whoever gets eaten towards whoever did the eating. Basically, it's going in the direction that the energy and the matter is flowing. So, basically, the energy is going from the plant through to the primary consumer and so forth. So, you see here several examples of these food chains. Now, in several different biomes. Now, for example, you see here on the marine food chain on the right side how the phytoplankton, which is in this case something like a cyanobacteria or an algae, uh, is going to be the one doing the photosynthesis and then a zooplankton which is a smaller uh, microscopic animal kind of thing eats the, phyto the phytoplankton that's why the arrow is pointing this way and then that gets eaten by some sort of a bigger fish which is now a carnivore because he doesn't eat the primary uh, producer and then he then he gets eaten by a bigger carnivore which gets eaten by a bigger carnivore so you see that the energy is flowing in that direction the same thing you see here in the terrestrial food chain just starts with a plant then goes to some sort of herbivore that's eaten by a mice, that's eaten by a snake, that's eaten by uh, the hawk. So you see that the, the order or the flow of the energy in the food chain. Also notice that each level has a name. Primary producer, the name for the ones that actually create the sugar in the, during the photosynthetic process. Then you have the primary consumers, which are the ones that eat their primary producers, and all of them, by definition, are going to be uh, herbivores if they only eat this, if they never eat anything else. Um, then you have secondary consumers, which is going to be the first level carnivores. And then you have the tertiary consumers, or second level carnivores, and then quaternary consumers and beyond. Now, notice that this food chain is quite long. It's actually one, two, three, four, five steps long, but food chains are usually not going to be very long, and we'll talk more about that later and why that's the case. Very rarely you're going to have something larger than a quaternary consumer. We'll talk about why that's the case in a different video. I also wanted to show you that after the, this, all of these things die, all of them die, they're going to be decomposed. So the decomposer, it's not really part of a food chain, but it's like if you, if you were going to put the decomposer somewhere, he's going to be the link that, that links all the steps of the food web and then he's going to generate nutrients which the the producers are going to use to to make the sugar so if I actually would modify this food chain is here the top left to show you that actually everybody is going to be consumed by the decomposer even the producer itself anything that dies gets decomposed by the decomposer and that's kind of how that works but that's basically a food chain it shows the direction of the flow of energy or matter into ecosystem and that each step is going to be have a name uh, primary producer, primary consumer, which is the first level consumer, and then secondary and so forth. All right. And now notice that the primary consumers are usually herbivores, and then uh, from there on it's going to be carnivores. All right. Now, if some of these carnivores also ate the primary the primary uh, producer, something like this, for example, if the the carnivore also ate that, that meant that he's going to be an omnivore. And we'll talk more about that in the next diagram, which is a food web. Now, a food web is, looks complex, but basically what this is, is showing you all the food chains in the ecosystem put together. So instead of showing you just one direct order of who eats whom, this has, shows all the animals in the ecosystem and all of the relationships with each other. And you can see how complex this can possibly get, because sometimes an animal eats more than one animal, and so forth. So you see in this one here on the right side, for example, how the you have the... Uh, phytoplankton, which are the ones which are actually doing the photosynthesis, and they get eaten by different kinds of zooplankton. Notice how this guy here, for example, eats both of the of the phytoplankton types, but then he gets eaten by only one kind of fish, that guy over there, the tuna, right? And but this phytoplankton over here, this zooplankton gets eaten by the lanternfish and by that one and by this one, so. Depending on which animal you look like, the energy flow is going to be connected to all other people. So this is showing you all the feeding relationships that exist within the ecosystem. And in class, we're going to practice how to create these. And the best way to do that is to look at it one food chain at a time and basically start building the, 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 the web as you add one food chain on top of the other. 
and connect everybody that eats everybody. It's actually an interesting uh, puzzle to kind of try to set up. And we'll talk about uh, how the dynamics of food webs also in a different video. This is just to show you what a food web is. And remember, it's kind of like putting all the food chains in the ecosystem together and make a food web. Then you also have an, the pyramids. This is the energy pyramid. It shows you how the energy is flowing through, uh, through the levels of the ecosystem. Remember those levels we talked about? Uh, primary uh, producer, secondary uh, consumer, primary consumer, so forth. This is showing you that as you go higher and higher in the food web, there's less and less energy available. What, what that's saying actually is that because the animals are going to be living, they're going to be walking around, they're going to be reproducing, they're going to be hunting, they're going to be using some of the energy that, oh, from what they eat. So the flower that gets eaten, not all of the energy that that flower produced goes to whatever to the herbivore. Uh, some of the energy the flower used, right, and got released as heat. The same thing will be true once the herbivore gets eaten by a carnivore. Some of the energy that was in him was used up before the carnivore ate him. And so as you go up the levels of the energy pyramid, you will see that there's less and less energy available because all the energy is being used up or released as heat as you go up the levels. And that's why there's limits to how long the food chains can be. And we'll talk more about that in other videos. I just wanted to show you what an energy pyramid looks like. And basically this is the idea that as you go higher and higher in the levels of the food chain or the food web, less and less energy is available. And we'll discuss more about this in another video. The same thing is true about this pyramid, which is the pyramid of mass. Um, there usually is more mass of producers than there is of herbivores, than there is of carnivores, or there is carnivores that eat other carnivores. Because if there's less energy available with each level, that means you can support less uh, matter. So that means there's got to be a lot more biomass, the total amount of plants in the ecosystem. There's a lot more of that than there is of herbivores. Think of it putting all the cows in a scale and putting all the grass in a scale. You're going to have a lot more grass than you're going to have of cows because of that whole thing that there's less energy available at each level. Less energy means less matter can be maintained in order, which is a characteristic of life, with that energy. And there's also the pyramid of numbers, the same concept. If there's less energy available, there's going to be less people as you go up or higher in the levels. That means there's going to be a lot of producers, less herbivores, less carnivores, less carnivores that eat those carnivores. So as you go up in the food web towards the higher level consumers, there's going to be less of them than there is in numbers of producers, for example. So those are ecological diagrams, and I hope you understand them. And in the next video, we're going to start talking about how energy flows in the ecosystem and explain in a little more detail some of the concepts that are introduced in this video.